Okay, this one's from Sunny. With the current trends in the market, what advice would you give companies that take longer to monetize, monetize, such as social apps? Great question, Sunny. Okay, so we're sitting here. It's 2017. You may be watching this on YouTube, and it's 2027. Who knows? Maybe watching it in your VR headset. Uh, so this advice could be wrong in 2027. That's one of the interesting things about startups. Some advice is timeless. Some advice um, has an expiration date. In this case, I'm going to give you some timeless advice. A lot of businesses take a long time to reach scale and uh, to reach a level in which you would want to turn on monetization. What you want to do is get product market fit first, understand your market. When you have that, generally speaking, you can turn on monetization. There are some companies that just have such an obvious business model they charge from day one. An example of that would be Uber or Airbnb taking a percentage of everybody's transaction. Other companies like Slack or Yammer, they might give it out for free and try before you buy. So they do it based on usage. But generally speaking, the great companies have a business model built in. They will sometimes defer. So what we're really talking about here is advertising-based companies. I think that's really what Sonny's talking about. So for social apps, which are advertising-based to date, well you shouldn't go to an advertiser with 1,000 people a day or even 10,000 or even 100,000. You really need to get to a million people a day for any type of advertiser to care. So anything you do in, a, uh, in that space, social or any advertising-based business, it should really be about getting to that million people a day, 10 million people a month. And then you can start to have an ad team. Before that, it just doesn't make sense because even if you do sell it, you're not going to have enough inventory for any real advertisers to care. So... In this case, uh, what should you do as a founder? The number one most important thing is to keep your burn low. The biggest mistake I see people make in startups is they raise $500,000. They go, $500,000, I'm going to hire a PR firm for $35,000 a month. I'm going to get a new office space for $15,000 a month. And I'm going to hire these five developers uh, for $15K a month. And now all of a sudden, they're at 125K burn rate and they've burned through their 500K in under six months. And they're at month three going, where'd all the money go? Better to raise the 500, just have you and your co-founder or you and two co-founders sitting there, three people working from home, working from a really cheap sublet, spending four or $500 on rent, if that, and just really try to grind it out with low burn culture. If you have a low burn rate culture, you're never gonna make short-term decisions because you're not gonna be looking at how many months of runway you have. Whereas the people who have five months of runway, four months of runway, three months of runway, they just think differently. They're thinking, what shenanigans, what rabbit can I pull out of a hat in order to impress my existing investors or new investors to give me a million or another 500? And you can basically play that game two, three, maybe four times before your investors go, you know what? We, I've written four checks, three checks, two checks. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, and other outside investors are not willing to validate this company. Screw it, I'm out. I'll find another. If I'm going to write a fourth check, I might as well give it to somebody else who can get it done with one or two checks And this company that's proven they qu can't get it done, and I've written them three checks. And these people have high burn culture, and these other people have low. So if I give 100000 to this next group of people, and they're only burning 10K a month, Wow, it lasts for 10 months. If I give 100K to a company burning 125, it lasts for three weeks. We make these judgments as investors, especially early stage ones. So low burn culture. Going to San Francisco is a mistake if you have your pre-product market fit and you're trying to scale and make a connection. That's why a lot of people today are coming to the Valley on a regular basis or maybe living in Santa Cruz or Los Angeles or you know, in Napa or Healdsburg or wherever, uh, Seattle, Austin, other cities, and then San Diego. Getting that product market fit, slowly figuring out the problems, keeping a low burn culture, then coming maybe to an incubator like Launch Incubator or Y Combinator or Highway One and then you know, going a little bit bigger here in San Francisco, right? So I always say, hey, this is a great place to be. There's a one caveat to that. It's a great place to be if you can live frugally, which is a specific challenge here. If you are older founders and you have three kids in private school and you need a 5,000 square foot, you know, or you need a five bedroom house because you have three kids and whatever, like you're going to burn through a lot of money in this town, let me tell you. So you have to be cognizant of this fact and keep that low 
burn culture until such time that you can raise money based on your month to month growth. Hey everybody, I want to tell you about a brand new service called Upside.com. My assistant Jess has been using it here and it is awesome. You go to Upside.com and you book your hotel and your flight together and they give you an Amazon gift card for between $100 and $300. Yes, if you are booking your hotel and your airline ticket together, your flight and your hotel together, that saves a lot of money for you, and they pass that along in the form of an Amazon gift card. If you're a frequent biz traveler, your company saves a bunch of money, and you can get thousands of dollars a year just by buying your air and hotel together at Upside.com. Plus, you'll still get all your miles, so there's no issue there, and it takes about three minutes or less, actually, I did it less than three minutes, to see how much you can save by buying your flights and hotel together for one low price. So here is your call to action. Please go to Upside.com and enter the promo code TWIST, and you will get at least a $100 Amazon gift card for free for your first trip. It is a no-brainer. Save big on travel and get a big gift card every trip. That call to action, one more time, go to Upside.com and use the promo code TWIST. It's great to have you as a partner on the uh, podcast. Thanks a lot to Upside for supporting independent media like This Week in Startups. Okay, speaking of which, let's get back to this amazing episode.